Okay guys, welcome to the channel. The video continues. All right, today I am using my Simply Straight brush. I got this on Amazon. This is a straightening brush that I have used only once and I liked it the first time. Today I'm using it because I need to evaluate my ends. To, I'm feeling a little knots on the ends and a little roughness. So in this new year, I have decided to think more of the health of my hair versus the length of my hair. So I am going to use the Simply Straight brush today and then I'm gonna clip my, I'm gonna give you guys a demo of how I'm using the brush and how well it works on my hair. Now this brush goes all the way from 176 degrees all the way up to 450. And the first time I used it, I had it set on like 250 and it just took the kinks out of my hair. I'm not trying to get bone straight. Today, I'm going to try it at 302. That's where it jumps from. It goes from 302 up to 311 down to 296. Different. It never has an even number to me. It doesn't. Okay. And the heat protecting that I'm using is the Cream of Nature Heat Defense. Never used it before. My hair takes very, very well to heat. I have yet to have heat damage. So let's get it started. It is already heated up. Only thing I don't like about it for the most part is the back of it gets pretty hot. And if you're not careful, if you touch it, you can burn yourself. Okay. And I'm not going to try to do too many passes. I would really like to just keep it to one or two passes. That's just one. And you don't get very close to your scalp with this. Okay, that's the third pass. And that's pretty good for me. And then I don't know if you can tell or not, but my ends look a little little rough right around there. So I am going to clip that out, but I'm gonna go through my whole head with a brush before I do that. I have to get another clip and put that off to the side. And I'm only going through my hair with my wide tooth comb or either my Denman brush, okay? And it glides through my hair pretty fast. I noticed when I had it on the lower temp before, my hair was getting stuck. But if the heat is a little bit higher, it goes right through. Yeah. And pretty much this will give me the look of a blowout. Okay, I'll be back shortly. Okay guys, I'm heading into this last section and I did notice as I got the closest to the front of my head, I had to turn the heat up on the brush. So I did move the heat up to like 325. Still, that doesn't give me the, sh the heat stretch that I got in the back of my hair. It's almost as if the front of my hair is not registering the heat at all so it just it definitely looks like a blowout and I do know I am going to have to clip my ends especially in the front because I can see the knots on the ends and I can feel the roughness which means more than likely when I examine my hair more thoroughly I have split ends single strand knots on the ends. You can actually hear them. I don't know how much I'll cut off yet, but in just a moment I'll release my hair so you guys can see the length it is now. And then once I cut, I'll come back on and do a final shot, a surround of where my hair is. I am no longer worried about the lymph retention right now because once I get it healthy, then my length will return to where it was a couple of years ago. I haven't hit that three mark plateau from my surgery yet. They say you tend to start seeing the breakage or massive shedding on the amount of hair that you may lose from a major body change within three months. So my three month mark is what I, December 16th was the surgery. So January 16th, February 16th, March 16th. So by April, I should start noticing if I'm going to lose any significant amount of hair due to my uh, hysterectomy surgery. Okay, and you can already see in the front that it is much, much, much spacey on the ends than it is in the back. 
and I'll turn around in just a minute for you guys to see the back. But all in all, it took me about an hour to do this. This is my weaker side over here. My hairline on the, uh, this side is growing back much, much faster than this side. But I'm okay. It's growing back. Okay, that's it for the brush. Let me turn it off so it can start pulling down. And when you flat iron your hair or do a blowout or anything like that, you love your hair so much and how much more manageable it is, you almost tempt it to become a flat ironed or blow dried natural. Okay, I'm going to turn around so you guys can see the back. And I am going to come back on when I do, after I do the cut, but right quick, I'm going to do a little bit of a length check. That's the front. Like I said in my other video, the front pretty much stays right at my chin because I have been cutting off damage as I go along. A little bit less on this side. This is my weaker side. Let's take a little bit in the back and see. Yep. Right at my collarbone. That's, that is usually where my hair grows. Last time before I did that, that big chop back in August of last year, it was, it was about here. And I cut it up to my collarbone. And since I've been slowly studied cutting off the damage, it usually stays right around my collarbone. And since I'm working on the health, that is okay. Okay, guys, I'm going to come back on after I do any clipping and let you see what it looks like after I cut off some of the the damaged ends all right see so okay, guys this is actually how i'm going to cut my hair i have sectioned my hair off into six parts trying my best to get them as even as possible in the back here here and here as i cut i'll bring them to the front and the side and trim off the same amount on each side and then i'll probably bring the front and bring it to the front and cut off anything that I see on there without scalping myself. Okay, stay tuned. All right, I did decide to come on here, guys, and show you how I am trimming or cutting my ends off. So I'm just working with my uh, Tangle Wrangler brush because for some reason, I don't own a red tail comb. Okay, and I'm, I'm doing this alternating back and forth between each section, and this is generally the amount that I'm taking off on each section that I uh, separate out and I'm trying my best to keep the sections pretty small that way I don't end up butchering my hair as much and it's turning out pretty good I like I like the the press that I get from that straightening brush it doesn't bone straight my hair but it does just enough in order for me to do what I need to do which is trim my ends effectively okay and here's another section coming up this is the section of my hair, I don't know if you remember back on one of my other videos where the crown of my hair kept breaking off and I realized that it was a part of my low porosity in the very, very crown of my hair. And I had literally just got the scissors and cut off like a two by two square of hair down to like two to three inches. I just cut off all the damaged area. And that is what you see right here. The shorter section is that area already grown back out. Makes me wish I would have just big chopped all of my hair at the same time when I cut that crown because it didn't take no more than a year and a half, almost two years for it all to grow back out effectively. And I'm not too much worried about evening my hair out because I don't wear my hair straight at all. That's me indicating how high that portion of my crown was at that time. Yeah, I don't wear my hair straight at all, so I don't care anything about my ends being choppy or the length of my hair not being even all the way around, just as long as I get rid of all of the damaged areas that is surrounding my head. So I Okay guys, I am all done with my trim slash cut. 
And this is the hair that I cut off. All right, I'm gonna do a turn around so you can see 360 of my head. Okay, and to start, I'm gonna do a little mini measurement of the front. You remember where it was? It was just reaching my chin. Where now it's right below my nose. It was here, now it's at my nose. And in the back, it was right at my collarbone. So let's see what we're working with here. It's right now, right above. Almost still at my collarbone, but a little bit above. And that is fine. That is fine. I pretty much took off probably, it's a little bit longer on this side. Probably took off a half an inch on all of it. And in the front, as you saw, I took off about, what does that, two inches? Almost two inches? No. Inch and a half? Almost two inches? But I don't mind. I pretty much cut off all seagull strands, knots that I saw, all tangles that I saw. If it felt rough, I cut it off. And I immediately noticed as I'm doing this, and I did it in the bathroom, that I can easily comb through my hair without hearing the Rice Krispies of hair catching and breaking off. So this is something I needed to do and I'm not upset that I cut off so much hair. It'll grow back. Now my next thing is to focus in on getting my moisture in. I, now in the back, it's not that much of an issue. It's just the front of my hair from pretty much ears forward is where my low porosity problem is and the henna made it even worse. So that's what I'm dealing with now. So I've cut off all of my damaged ends for the most part. So I'm new slate starting out, get down with my uh, wash routine and stay consistent. Stop popping around with all of my products that I have. Stick with one line per month. Okay guys, thank you for watching. Any questions, comments, any video suggestions you might want me to do or like to see here on my channel, hit me up in the comment section below. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I thank you for watching. Be blessed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.